All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome to JC Live, your weekly source for JCL news and fun. I'm your host, Mr. Kurt Ristroff, Publications Chair for the National Junior Classical League, an organization of middle and high school students in classical courses. Welcome to the show. Happy Monday. We're very excited to bring uh, a, an exciting, exciting group. We've got a two-parter for y'all today. Today's feature is a spotlight on Health Careers High School JCL. It's another local spotlight, one of my favorite uh, types of episode to do. Let me know if the music is a little bit loud. I've got some some Western background music. Some uh, I just typed in, you guys know what I always do when I go to find background music is I type in um, whatever the theme of the show is and then ambient music. So I typed in Texas ambient music and I found some some instrumental background music. I can put the link in the chat, but uh, if it's too loud, let me know. All right, so Health Careers High School from San Antonio. We're joined first by their sponsors. Kenny and John, how are y'all doing today? We're, we're doing well, you know, actually really, really well. And we're, we're so excited to be here. And uh, thank you, Kurt, for uh, having us on. We're doing amazing. And it's a real pleasure to be on the live stream, Kurt. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, like I said, this is a two-parter. It's a two-for-one. For the first half of the show, we're going to be talking to the HCHS JCL sponsors about the, um, their club and how they see things from sort of the, uh, the sponsor side of things. And then we'll be joined by four of their officers who are going to talk about things from the student perspective. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to tag us in the chat. Uh, other announcements just real quick we have um, we have some other exciting shows for y'all coming up so for those of you who have tuned in next week we're going to be having a JCL we're calling it JCL legends RPG it's like JCL Dungeons and Dragons it's gonna be run by uh, mr. Joey Chatelaine and Anne Nguyen, who are longtime SCLers, they've put that together, and it's a bunch of JCLers who are going to be playing, so tune in for that. That'll be very fun and interactive some with the, with the chat. Uh, the next week there will be a, another local spotlight on, let's see, on Leon High School from Florida, and the week after that we're back to panel discussions uh, from JCL to medicine. So that's the only main announcement I have at the beginning of the show here, is those will be our next three shows. We're here every Monday tune on in so we are we are joined by kenny and john i i spent a little bit of time just before the stream looking up a little bit about hchs because i didn't know too much about the school y'all are a, a top 40 magnet school in the u.s according to u.s news and world report this year and when i told him that it was a surprise to us i don't think we knew that yeah, and, and kenny said with 40 that's it which made it sound <laughs> like you would rank y'all much higher than that so can you tell me a little bit about the school? John, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, so Healthcare's High School was uh, founded in 1984. So, you know, uh, 30 plus years ago. And it is a, a public magnet school uh, within Northside ISD. Uh, it is a public school, but it's a magnet uh, program. And so students, um, and we, uh, we, we take in and we have usually uh, a total student population of about 800 to 900 or so students. Um, and as the name suggests, it's a, a magnet school that's very much medically focused in its uh, curriculum. But um, we take students and accept students from all over the city. Um, uh, students will apply and then there are so, and then the uh, applicant pool um, is then uh, uh, goes through a lottery and, and the students are chosen uh, from there. And um, the, the school itself, uh, while it has an emphasis on um, you know uh, medicine and those kinds of programs, uh, I think offers uh, I think a, a pretty comprehensive uh, range of, of uh, education and, and courses, uh, and we're very very fortunate um, and and uh, very very proud uh, to um, to not lead any of the medical strands uh, at Healthcare's, but rather uh, to be at the head of of the Latin program, which is uh, still very very vibrant after after thirty plus years. John, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, actually, let me uh, uh, let me formally introduce myself. My name is uh, John Chu. Uh, I am one of two uh, uh, Latin club and health careers Latin teachers uh, here at, at, at the school. Um, 
uh, I am uh, uh, partners with uh, uh, Kenny Van Eymeren, and, and he and I have been working together now as kind of a sponsor team uh, for about, this is actually, I think, our fourth year uh, working together as, as teachers. And, um, you know, I myself am also a, a graduate and an alum of Health Careers High School, uh, having taken Latin, um, you know, under uh, uh, Mr. Clyde Lehman, um, who founded the program you know, all those years ago uh, uh, in the in the late 80s. And um, I also, after, you know, college and I came back to, to health careers to teach, uh, worked with, with, with Clyde for, for 11 years. Um, and I'm, uh, uh, you know, not just grateful to have been, you know, a part of, uh, of this school for, for as long as I have, um, but to now, you know, uh, and to be uh, 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 working with, with Kenny uh, uh, together as, as, a, as a team. And I am Kenny Van Eymeren, and I teach Latin and creative writing and mythology and English at Health Careers High School. And um, I also am an alumnus of Health Careers High School. And that's one of the really special things about our program, Kurt, that over the course of the last 30 years, Health Careers has produced over a dozen Latin teachers and continues to churn out more Latin teachers. We have a couple going through the pipeline right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you can ask our students why they think that is, because one of the students that you're going to talk to is planning on becoming a Latin teacher, not by any urging of ours. This is something they, they just decide to do themselves. And that's just part of the school's like history and culture. OK, I've noticed that there's a very strong alumni presence. A lot of alumni have been reacting to our advertisement post on Instagram. It seems like we've got a bunch of alumni in the chat today. So wonderful. Uh, how is that? How is it that Health Careers uh, has such good alumni relations? Is it because they have such a good time in JCL? Yeah, I mean, it has everything to do with the sense of community and the culture that our program really fosters, that that's the foundation upon which all of our academic success is built. And it's been a huge goal of mine over, my, over the last three years that I've been back at Health Careers to help the students feel more connected to the history of the club. And so this year, like during coronavirus, I've brought back several alums who graduated, you know, 10, 15 years ago and more recently to just talk to the kids about their experience, what it was like back then and about the pathways that they can take forward. Not unlike what you've been doing, Kurt, with these, um, you know, post JCL professional live streams with the theater people and the medical people and the law people. And so it really think, I think helps our students see that it, it's really true that once you're a member of the Health Careers Latin Club, you are always a member of Health Careers Latin Club. And every single year, coronavirus or not, we have people coming back and visiting us on Wednesday afternoons during Latin club meetings, just out of the blue. Wow. And uh, it's, it's a really common occurrence. That's awesome. And that, yeah. And that's, that's fed by, you know, the, as, as Kenny already mentioned, you know, the, the kind of culture and community that, that we have, and, and that was really cultivated and started, um, you know, again, like over, you know, 34 years ago at, at this point. Um, and uh, one, one, you know, statistic and, or I guess one, one, you know, thing that always comes to mind is that, you know, every teacher who has ever taught Latin here at Health Careers High School um, has themselves been a graduate of the school and gone through the program. And I, and I know that that- Except for know, the originator. Except for the originator, exactly right. Uh, <laughs> and of course, you know, uh, uh, Clyde Lehman started it all, but, you know, the when, when I think about, you know, the, the ways in which this community was built, it wasn't built in one year it wasn't built in one day uh, just like rome right but um it was built over the course of, of many many years and i know that it's just not that typical if if um if, if possible at all where everyone who has taught here has been here and um n understands what the program has been and um can see forward and, and understand what can continue to change in order to make it better yeah, just to quantify for that for you, Kurt, there are two other teachers who used to teach Latin and health careers who were also themselves both alumni. Wow. So four out of five. Yeah. In the history of the program. <laughs> yeah, and the first one couldn't have been an alum because he started it all. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. I just realized that I forgot to set the stream to public. <laughs> I always put it as unlisted at first. 
So I just set it to public. I've had a couple of people text me, where's the stream? And I sent them oh. a link directly. <laughs> but this is incredible because without without a public link, we still have one of the biggest um, chats we ever. So I don't know if that was people clicking on the direct link on Instagram or that was because you sent uh, the link out to so many people. But thank you for that. We and, roll and deep, culpa. Kurt. We roll so deep. In fact, let me tell you how deep we roll. <laughs> so our club, you know, started out early on with, you know, a middling numbers of students and it's grown and grown over the years. And up about 20 years ago, we kind of reached the peak, which um, we've been holding steady at about 100 members for the last 20 years. And so like, keeping in mind that our whole school's enrollment is only like 800 kids. And so for our Latin club, it, it's a major organization on campus and we take a lot of pride in it. And so, uh, but that is by no means the largest program around, by the way, like San Antonio is a hotbed of Latin programs. And like our uh, two main like competitors in town, Clark High School and Antonian High School, up until recently, I don't know what coronavirus has done, but up until recently, they each had more than 200 members each. Mm -hmm. And so we go up against them in local competitions, at area competition, mm -hmm. you know, and, and our area competitions in San Antonio, because we're out here repping Texas, you know, for you guys. Our area competitions in San Antonio usually have like a thousand students attend. That's just for San Antonio. Wow. <laughs> And then it goes on to state convention and, you know, at state, it's it's huge. There's usually as many people at state as there are at nationals. And yeah, it's not Texas, as long. Texas state convention is usually bigger than the national convention, right? Because y'all are you usually have 15 to 1700, right? And nationals is 12 to 1300. That's right. John, do you know? Yeah, so typically uh, for state, you know, we can expect usually anywhere from about, uh, I would say on, on any given year, like 1,300 to 1,700 uh, members. And and so much of that is because, you know, in Texas, at least in, in particular cities like San Antonio and so on, there is this kind of really rich um, community of, of not just, you know, cl you know uh, Latin teachers, but programs, um, you know, in various schools, you know, and uh, as a result, it attracts a, a lot of students uh, to to these uh, uh, big clubs, um, you know, in 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 Texas, you know, the if, you, if, if we want to think about like the largest programs, you know, there's, of course, you know, Clark High School and we have you know, Antonian and Health Careers High School. And the, all three of those schools are happen to be within about a 10 mile radius of each other uh, in San Antonio. And they're made up of sponsors who themselves are incredible uh, teachers and incredible people and, and um, it, you know, people that I know uh, uh, Kenny and I are very proud uh, to call our colleagues and our friends, you know, and it is um, it, it is a, yeah, a, a hub for, um, you know, uh, classics and, and um, the, the JCL. I yeah. Remember... Go ahead, Kenny. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, in San Antonio, you know, we've got our own little classical society that runs the local JCL things. And I think we're approaching 40 or so Latin teachers just in San Antonio. Wow. I was going to say uh, a shout out to the 2015 National Convention hosts. So 2015 National Convention was Trinity University. And I mean... Okay, hold up. I got a story to tell. I got okay. a story. I was just going to say there were a bunch of... You know, every time there's a national convention, people from the area help out run running the convention, parents and students and Latin teachers, etc. And I, I was NSCL president in 2015, and I remember the local folks being particularly helpful that year. So, but well, I want to hear your story. Well, John was one of the three organizers. What? John was one of the three organizers oh, yeah. of that convention. And yeah. so my story has to do with you, Kurt. Oh. <laughs> it was oh, that. Does it? <laughs> dances it was the dance that was in the in one of the like the gyms mm -hmm. and we had these like rainbow led pool noodles that everybody was throwing around mm -hmm. and you came out and busted out this like big bow staff i don't know and what we're, you're like, talking twirling about twirling that around all over the place there's no and video evidence like... of that <laughs> yes there well i don't know if there's video there's evidence, photo evidence I, there's no video I, evidence. <laughs> i am providing live or um, testimony okay witness testimony right here and 
I came up and asked you about it uh, because, like, That's I had right. done a little bit of the same thing. Um, and so I was like, yo, like, where'd you learn to do that? And I, I mean, I was a sponsor at the time, not at my current school, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, and I asked you about it. And, uh, and you're, <laughs> I don't remember what you said, but like, it was a sight to behold, guys. Kurt Ristroff, like, just blazing around this, like, big, I think it was like a white bow staff. It was a five foot long PVC pipe from Home Depot right. that you can buy for like a dollar seventy nine with some some high intensity glow sticks taped onto it that was smuggled into the dance because I was friends with Ben Hinkle, who is the sponsor from North Carolina who runs the uh, uh, coordinates all the dance moderators and, and yes um, and a chaperones. very good friend of mine. He, I taught in North Carolina for three years with him. Oh, okay. so yeah, he's a homie. Yeah, I told Ben before that. I was like, "Well, Ben, I'm going to um, I'm going to bring this this lightsaber thing into the dance. Just can I do that?" He he was cool with it. So I did. I now seem to remember you coming up and talking to me after that, Kenny. But I had not put two and two together that you were the same person. Yeah, that was a fun convention. So so lots of Latin in San Antonio, and and y'all are right at the forefront of that. So. Um, can you tell me, I'm, I'm really interested in the health careers curriculum and how that fits in. But before we get into that, uh, a, a technical question for you. You said you've got 100 JCLers. Um, are a lot of those students who take Latin all four years in high school or they take Latin for the first two years and they stay in the Latin club because they love it or a mix of both? There's, there's um, I think every person who you know takes Latin uh, at health careers um, you know, they can go on a, on a different path, you know, uh, in, in, in Texas, you know, uh, especially in our district, you know, students, uh, need to have, you know, a minimum of two years of a language, you know, in order to graduate. And we're very fortunate here at health careers where we offer two languages, you know, in Spanish and in, and in Latin. And, um, oftentimes a student who takes on uh, a Latin one in, in freshman year, they can continue taking it all four years of, of high school. Um, we do have a lot of students that, um, you know, once they start taking it, a lot of them just keep taking it, you know, uh, you know, whether it's Latin one, two, three, and, and, and potentially four uh, as well. Uh, we, we've also had more recently, um, you know, students, especially from the, the, the charter school world, uh, who have taken Latin before in their middle school experience, and they, you know, will come into, uh, in, into health careers, um, you know, maybe you know, starting out as a, a level three uh, as, as a freshman or in level two as, as a freshman. And what that also means is that if they stick with the program, um, that, that means that by the time they're a, se a junior or senior, uh, they can also take Latin five. And, and this year uh, we have uh, a Latin five student and a Latin six uh, student as well uh, for that for that very reason. Um, you know, we do have, you know, some students that after maybe th their second year, they, they drop off. But um, no matter what, if they're a part of the, the club, uh, as, as Kenny mentioned earlier, they're, they're always part of it. And uh, we are um, they're you know, they're 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 part of the, the, the familia, so to speak uh, uh, there. Um, my own brother, who also attended health careers, took two years of Latin, you know, uh, and that was his choice. Um, but every single year, um, you know, since then, he'll come up to me and like, Yo, John, where's my Latin club shirt? Because he stays up to date. He he wants <laughs> he wants his merch <laughs> uh, every yeah. single year. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll do you one better, John, that my brother <laughs> and sister-in-law who met in Latin Club and are married now, of course, they've actually come, flown down to San Antonio from Seattle and then driven as chaperones to nationals the last couple of years before coronavirus happened just to like chaperone the club and continue being a part of the program. And just to clarify, Kurt, um, all, all the members of our club are currently in, enrolled in Latin. Like when Ooh, I say, okay. like they are JCL members, they are in a Latin class. And, you know, we a lot of students drop off, but we have really strong uh, uh, like enrollment in our upper levels. Mm -hmm. I think we have 20 some odd students in our Latin 4 AP class right now. And we did last year as well, 25 or so. Right. And up until the year of coronavirus, we had a 30 year streak of every single student ever passing the AP test. Not a wow. single healthcare student ever failed the Latin AP test um, in that span. That's awesome. That is an impressive streak. Congratulations. 
Um, one of the things that we that's on my list of things to talk with y'all about is how specifically Health Careers does national. So you just alluded to you've got some alumni who come in and chaperone. Um, can you tell me about? Well, how does Texas do nationals? Because these huge states, they don't travel as a state, right? You travel with your school. Right. So, uh, John, you can speak to some of the other logistical parts, but I just want to say that I'm pretty sure that for the last few years at least, we have brought more students to nationals than any other school in the country. And I, I, I ask the BLS, the Boston Latin people every year to find out <laughs> who brought more, you know, not that it's a point of pride or anything. Uh, but like we, we, we do take pride in that. But honestly, it has so much to do with our district support, because if mm -hmm. our students get first place or second place at state convention um, in, a, in the academic or creative arts categories, our district pays for their national registration. Really? And I don't know how many, how many other districts do that. And so that allows us to usually bring about a group of 35 students to nationals each year from health careers. From a single school, goodness. So you right. get your own bus, huh? Yeah, we do get our own bus, um, but w we also don't just let any student go to nationals. John, you want to address that? Yeah. Let me talk about that because, you know, we have, you know, we're again, you know, our, our club is, is so large and we have, you know, oftentimes students of the same level, you know, participating and competing in, in various contests. And so uh, because of that, because of those numbers, uh, we do have a process of, of qualifying, you know, for both uh, state and, and eventually nationals. Um, but ultimately you know what we want to do is make sure that those students who are you know in our club and who are really dedicated and, and showing showing what they're uh what they're doing in terms of their expertise are um are eligible and rewarded you know uh, uh with uh being eligible for the national convention so the way we we typically do it is um you know at uh, the state convention their performance um in their uh their category if they typically if they place you know first second or third um, in a contest at, at nationals, oh, I'm sorry, at, at state, um, you know, the Texas State, you know, uh, JCL convention, then um, then for us, they are eligible and, and they will be able to go to nationals. Now, in terms of what gets covered financially and so forth, that depends on what kind of district support we have and so on. Uh, but in our minds, uh, uh, you know, they, they've earned that, that spot. And what that also means, Kurt, is that the fact that we're able to bring 30 plus students or 30 plus students come from health careers almost every year um, to nationals means that all of them have, have placed in like the top three at state. Um, and that is uh, nuts. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it speaks to, um, it, it speaks to them, how talented they are, but more importantly, how really dedicated they are uh, to uh, to their to their contest. Um, one quick note that's kind of related to that, um, you know, it, uh, you know, from its inception, our club, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, we as teachers and sponsors have never required any of our land students to ever be a part of club. That it is always something that is, it's an opportunity, it's an extracurricular, it's there for them if they want it, and we're just really lucky that they want to be a part of it. And when they do, you know, good things happen. We do have some students, some really excellent students who do not join club and that's their prerogative. But the vast majority of them, they want to get in on it. They see the culture. They love it. They see that it's a family vibe and it's uh, it's just yeah, it's an alluring thing. It's got all this momentum and people want to be a part of it. And we've got a really well-oiled machine that is designed to get students up to a very high level of academic achievement with their chosen specialty, which our officers can elaborate upon. Okay. And is a lot of that, and I'm going to talk to the officers more about it, is a lot of that students helping students, particularly for things like dramatic interpretation and some of the creative arts contests, some of that Well, is, actually, is students, um, I sort of take the lead role when it comes to coaching the performance categories. But with all of the academic categories, um, it is purely students teaching students. Wow. Um, and that sort of ties into the other thing that you were at, wanted to ask us about, which is why we don't play her Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to address that now, John. Um, I, I, I can, Talking yeah. I, officers sure. is trying to join. Yeah, Delina is <laughs> trying to join. Um, right, right. Yeah. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> 
Uh, should, Delina, should, stop trying to join. <laughs> should I should I let her in yet or not? Because <laughs> we don't uh, have a separate Google Meet to switch over to. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, we can switch over now if you want. If, are, are we ready, John? You want to just let the kids take it from here? Oh, yeah. No, oh, no. Uh, well, it it just uh, disappeared, the, the option for me to let her join. So oh, okay. eventually, I'm sure they'll all start to try rejoining, and I'll just let them in as they come. But yeah, if y'all wanted to, to answer that last topic. John, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, um, you know, uh, the, part of the, the ethos of what we do is that we want a, and that we expect our um, uh, older experienced students, uh, uh, you know, these specialists and experts to be the ones to teach the younger students, uh, not just so that, you know, they're able to impart knowledge and information onto them, but that, you know, uh, when it's time for those younger students to elevate, to get to that higher level, they take on that leadership role. Um, so much of the community and, and uh, the, the ways that our, our kind of club culture works is built on older students taking that lead, guiding uh, the young ones along, and then in the long run, those young ones can be ready, you know, when it's time uh, to teach the others. And that uh, constantly builds on not just the history of the club or the legacy of it and, and so on, but builds on that feeling of a family uh, as well. And, you know, uh, uh, us not doing uh, Kirtaman was a decision that was made by, by Clyde Lehman, you know, when, when he founded uh, uh, the club. And um, it was for that very reason that we wanted, um, you know, our students who were really, really good at what they do to be the ones to disseminate that and to teach others uh, going forward. And that's not to in any way um, disparage Kirtaman. I, 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 you know, I, Kenny can speak to, you know, his, his uh, passion and, and love for it as well. But I think that what we do in terms of our club works for our situation and, and that's um and that's why we, we do it that way yeah actually i was trained in how to do curtaminating when i was teaching student teaching at saint andrews with jenny luongo mm -hmm. and andrew wrist and and that whole crowd and so when i went out to north carolina i actually was chair of curtamin in north carolina for three years um and i do really love curtamin and I, you know, I volu I've volunteered at some of these Zoom Tommins that we've been having. Um, but yeah, at, at our program, it's just, it doesn't fit into the, like, the, the machine of, of the way that we, we do things. Uh, I did want to answer a question that uh, Mr. Webb, um, who I believe is also from your home state of Louisiana, if I'm not sure mistaken, is. Yep. Um, asked, he said, can, you, can they tell us what students must do at their regional convention before going to the Texas State Convention? So anybody can go to state, but because te because Texas is so big and we don't want like particular schools to dominate, uh, Texas has a rule where only one student per level per category is allowed to compete. Mm -hmm. And so because we have so many students, what that means is um, at area, they need to have beaten their classmates in their level and the same category in order to qualify to then go on and take that test at state. Mm -hmm. And so we usually have multiple students in almost every contest at area, but then at state, we're only allowed one student per level per contest. John, it just so happened that when you were giving that explanation, it got to a, like a really fast, intense part in the music. So somebody pointed out Mr. Chu's monologue is so good with this music. I'm going to, for the chat, I'm going to put the link to the, the background music that we're listening to in the chat so you can enjoy that at your leisure later. Well, John and I can't hear the music. No, so. they, they can't hear the music. So it, it was unintentional. Only the stream and I can hear the music. We can't hear any of the music. Gotcha. Well, John, I mean, I could go on for ages yeah. about our I, program. We could, but I think it's time to hand it over to the kids. I, I agree. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, as much as, you know, yeah, like Kenny said, uh, as much as we can talk about it forever, I think, um, you know, in the end, uh, I, I'd love to hear from, you know, our officers and, and from the from the people who are, who make this club uh, what it is and, and, and so on. So. Yes, I'm very excited to talk to them also. So. Um, to the both of you, normally I, when I, whenever guests leave the show, I'll end the stream and then I'll come back and properly thank the guests and everything. I think this time that may not be able to, to happen on Google Meet, so I'll send you an email later. But thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And Kenny, thanks for reaching out um, in the first place. And thanks for those for of you, absolutely. Um, and Kenny recently submitted, uh, just today, submitted a really 
thorough, excellent entry to the JCL book project, the memory project. So if you haven't submitted your favorite JCL memory, we want to hear all about it, write it all up in as much detail as you want, and you can submit it using one of the links in the video description. Um, we're trying to get as many current JCLers, JCL alumni, parents of JCLers, anybody who has a JCL story to submit their favorite JCL memory, and we're trying to put together a book of those. So Kenny did that just today. Thanks again very much, and thanks to the both of you for coming on and, and telling us about your awesome club thank you so much kurt thanks for having us sure thank you thing. okay let us oh we're getting recursive here we go one sec everybody hi aiden hi i'm hi. aiden i'm the Eden. nice to meet you let me nice to meet you. let me bring you back up on the stream there we go. And there will be some other folks joining pretty soon, huh? Yep. Yeah, three other people. Good, good. Ah, here's Emma. And Delina. Hello, hello. Welcome to JC Live. But Delina is getting cut off just a little bit. Let me see if I can fix that. Hello. Is and there's a, a fourth person coming, right? Yes. Okay, that may yeah, fix no. the the lineup. I'm trying to not that not that y'all are doing anything wrong. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not cutting y'all off on the, the overlay. Nope. Let's see. That's I think the best we can do. So uh, while we wait on the, the fourth person to show up, can y'all introduce yourselves? I'll go first. Um, my name is Aiden. I'm the E Dial. Uh, I'm a senior and I'm in level four, and this is my fourth year in the club. So, what does E Dial mean in terms of y'all's club? So, in a normal year, um, I would be in charge of the aesthetics of the club and the induction event. But obviously, as this year has been vastly different, my roles have changed, and I've taken more of a social media outreach uh, position in as in the officers. Okay, and I've seen some of y'all's uh, posts on Instagram and uh, um, the induction event. I, I think I saw an older post of that. There were some people holding candles in a dark room. Yes, yeah, it's very, very, um, other people would describe it cult-like, but it's a family plus. <laughs> okay, so in lieu of that this year, did y'all have a, a virtual induction or? No, we decided that it really wouldn't be the same. Like the, the whole, entire reason that we have this is to let the new members become accustomed to our family and basically invite them in. Mm -hmm. And um, over over Zoom, we really felt like we really couldn't get that message through. So um, our initial plan was just to wait it out and see if we could have it in person. Um, but that still seems unlikely. Yeah, well, good luck. I mean, who knows, maybe by May, Things will be normal, but it seems like you'll have to have a, a double, doubly special one next year, maybe. Yes. And Emma, can you? I know I, I cut sure. everybody off. Oh no, yeah, you're good. Um, I'm Emma. I am the junior consul, and I'm in level three. And junior consul is basically like, like, if the consul is president, I would be vice president, I guess. Um, and yeah. So what are your responsibilities as vice president or junior consul? Um, a lot of the officers, I feel like um, we all, like, all work together, but um, some of what I do is like I help with um, coordinating meetings, like we do meeting attendance and stuff like that. And um, I also helped out with some of like the outreach social media stuff. And it's just like um, a lot of various things. Um, I helped with some of like the setting up like emails to send to like the new members to be like, hey, like welcome to the Latin club and stuff like that. Um, I'm not too sure about how this would have gone in a normal year because I actually haven't been an officer before, um, but I've been really enjoying it so far and I'm looking forward to seeing what we have going on in the future too. Gotcha. Delina, how about you go? Hi, Hannah. Welcome to JC Live. Hi, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, 
Yeah. Sorry, I'm late because I was trying to get in, but I kept asking for a password. So oh. I just refreshed it multiple times. And I, yeah. Okay. Well, you're here. We're, um, Aiden and Emma just introduced themselves. And we're just going through who y'all are and what your office is and what you do, that kind of thing. So, Delina, how about you go? Okay. Uh, yeah, my name is Delina, and I am in Latin 4, and I'm a Pride Tour. And, well, usually as Pride Tour, can I just keep in touch with category leaders, see what's happening, if they need any help with anything? And then, this year, since we're virtual, we kind of started, like, an online resource drive, so I've kind of been in charge of that and uploading what I could find online and just contacting category leaders if there's, like, anything they may need that I could try and find online what and are, sharing that with them. What are category leaders? What does that mean? Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, category leaders, um, basically, like, all the contests we have, like, mythology or grammar and stuff like that. So the older students, they're kind of called the category leaders, and they teach the younger students the material that they need to know to do well in the contests. Gotcha. Okay, so um, the online resources that you're putting together for the category leaders, those are contest materials, contest preparation materials? Yeah, like study guides that I find online or Quizlets, like stuff passed on from past category leaders, material like that. Like the idea, well, like I feel like it was kind of coincidence that we started it like since we're in a pandemic, but um, I know like we're kind of becoming more and more virtual or more internet based if that makes sense with the resources and typing and stuff like that so that's how that idea originally came up but then we happen to be in a pandemic we can't really pass out books because we usually have like a physical uh resource area we have like uh, a bookshelf with like tons of books on there and we usually check those out the students I actually still have mine from last year that i haven't been able to turn in yet and i'm like I'm like looking at them, I'm like, oh man, I should study. <laughs> what What's yeah. it a book of? Um, I have mythology, grammar, history, um, vocabulary. I was preparing to take Decathlon. So <laughs> a little bit of everything. Gotcha. So Hannah, how about you? Um, I'm, I'm senior console. Um, pretty much like Emma said, if she's considered vice president, I'm considered president but i really don't think of it like that because me and emma pretty much do the same things like we plan different events that we do at health careers and we just like kind of like oversee some of the things that we do for our club but yeah we also like help mr chu and mr b like coordinate meetings with the officers mm -hmm. like when are y'all free and then like what do we need to talk about and stuff like that sorry i was just thinking of that when hannah was talking but yeah yeah so how many there are other officers also yes yes there are seven seven others oh no, no. Oh, total. <laughs> seven total Wait, three. i can't count <laughs> no i didn't phrase the question very easily um so seven total officers so we're yeah. gotcha and they are uh what are their roles so we have Ainsley, so she's the Tribune, and that's a position that uh, we reserve for somebody in level two, just as like kind of a representative, but also um, an opportunity for someone in that level to be a leader. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Nikita, and she is the historiator. So in a normal year, like Mr. V said, we spend a lot of time making sure that our history is well kept up and that um, the current members feel connected to the past members. So in a normal year, she would uh, be tasked with either interviewing past alumni about their experiences in the club and helping to uh, preserve the current history. And then we have Lexi and she's our Quistor. And normally, um, I'm pretty sure that would be kind of like a treasurer or at least it used to be. Uh, but this year she's really helped me uh, with outreach and social media. So our, our roles have changed as the conditions have changed. Gotcha. So is there, I'm, I'm going to ask a very biased question now. Is there a, um, 
is there a local publication for Health Careers High School Latin Club? Like a, a newsletter or a, some kind of... No. Well, it sounds like your historiator kind of puts one, has one in her head or sort of assembles one as as y'all go throughout the year. It's less of like a like a newsletter. Like I feel like our newsletter would be our remind. Mr. Chu sends oh, okay. us reminds all like so that's kind of how we get like kept up with everything, but I wouldn't say there's like a specific like publication that we put out like like the ear or any or like anything like that. Okay. I I just ask that because I you know, and bias towards local publications. But, you know, if you've got a great remind community and if people are able to, to talk back and forth, I mean, that's one of the functions of a newsletter like that. So if you've got that covered, then awesome. So one of the things, um, it's a little tough sometimes talking to local officers this year because I, every question I ask is two questions. It's what are you doing this year and what do you do in a normal year? So, um, insofar as you can answer that what does what does your year look like what is a normal uh let's do a normal year first what are some of the events that y'all do how does recruiting go you know, we talked a little bit about the induction but um before the induction there's recruiting and then after the induction there's sort of a, a career a cursus to the year a curriculum to the year what do those look like yeah so like uh, mr v and mr chu mentioned we're at magnet school so mm -hmm. the school as a whole recruits to middle schoolers so that they apply. And as as a part of that, they we are also able to uh, recruit as a club. Uh, so we have a video that I made this year for recruiting that we can show later. But uh, most of that is to, for recruiting to the Latin program as a whole, not just the club. Um, so once the school year starts, Mr. V and Mr. Chu will talk to their classes about Latin Club and explain it, just so that anyone who wants to can join. And we usually have our first meetings in the first two weeks of school. Uh, and then after that is induction for the new members. And then we have something we call Latin Social. So it's just a day in December. Uh, we stay after school and we just have fun. It's a lot of fun events, karaoke, uh, competitions as a group, just to build the culture. We bring like um, game consoles and play like Super Smash Bros on like the Wii. Oh, okay, but you can yeah, only play like... as as Palutena or Pit or Dark Pit to be classically themed, right? <laughs> it's a joke. So after social, then we have area in February. So the Friday before the area, because it's usually on a Saturday, we have a lock-in. So it's a it's a meeting. That's a little bit longer where we get that last bit of studying in and uh, the performers get to give their performances for us and it's really cool. And then in March we have state. So we also have a walk-in for that. And then our final event of the year is eduction where we say goodbye to our seniors eduction. and we look forward to the new year. Okay. Eduction is always so sad because- It's so sad. We yeah. get so attached to the seniors because they're the ones who are like teaching us and leading us throughout the year. And then like they have to leave and we all like go up and we say like nice things about them or like things that we remember. And then Mr. Chu and Mr. V will like say things about them too. And it's just like, oh my gosh, it makes me want to cry. Oh yeah. yeah, Mr. V mentioned the trip. So after, I'm pretty sure it's state, I think, or it's area, either. After a convention, uh, we plan a trip to a museum. So sometimes it's the museum in Austin at the University of Texas. And sometimes it's our local art museum and it's just to look at classical art and then uh we eat together at a restaurant it's on a saturday it's really fun yeah like freshman year i went and we got a tour of the university of texas or austin and they kind of just showed us around to the library and stuff like that and it was really fun i love the art museum they have at ut austin did they have the room with all the pennies on the floor when you went uh, yes they did actually yeah yeah, yeah, I had a lot of pics from that day. That's a cool display. So, thank you. So that's what a normal year looks like. And then this year, how have things sort of changed? Well, everything has kind of shifted towards like the virtual aspects. So we kind of had to change like, this is more of like Aiden's specialty, so he can elaborate more. But um, we created an Instagram account, which 
like we've never had before but a lot of clubs have done it so um we created the instagram account to keep in touch with everybody we have every wednesday we have our zoom meetings and about like 70 ish people show up every week and we all go into breakout rooms and um like we've said before we have our category leaders teach our younger students sometimes like mr v previously mentioned we have guest speakers like um previous alumni come in talk about their relationship with latin club and how that's possibly transferred into their careers or just their college experiences but um that's kind of how we've adjusted to some of the club things that's really fantastic turnout 70 mm -hmm. people every week yeah, it's a lot how do you how do you get that how do you get people so enthusiastic that they want to come to latin club meeting every single week i think it's a lot of um this year like we've always been we've always been like culture focused like how do we get like this to be fun like people love coming for a reason it's because of the community and like the friends that you make while studying greek derivatives or you know and so we've been also like this year we were like okay so we're still having air like area and state but they're probably going to be online but what we really wanted to focus on was being sure that we kept that social aspect alive and so even though like in a normal year and this year we're still like, okay guys, like let's study, let's do, you know, we're like also like taking a step back and being like, what's really important. And so we're being sure to like maintain those friendships that we've been making um, along the way as, as we've been doing our virtual stuff. Yeah, we have a lot of memeable and like, like health careers kind of things. Like we have category leaders and then pretty much like the students of the category leaders, like the category leaders are our parents, like our mothers and fathers. So that's a lot. And then also Mr. Chu and Mr. V, we have like our Chu Premacy where Mr. Chu is like our Latin leader. <laughs> and like, I think the freshmen especially, like they don't, they don't know anything about this in middle school. And the reason why they show up, I think, is because they get super involved in like what health curse has to offer. And it's so unique with like Mr. Chu being like, our father and then mr v being like our cool uncle so it's i think that's we have our chant on the bus that we do that mr chu is scared of but we go like chu 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 and he's like please please don't do that but <laughs> you know it, it gets us hyped for area and state you know we have to do it and he's probably sometimes like oh my gosh and i chose this job to work with these crazy children why but <laughs> It's such a good time. <laughs> this is tremendous. I mean, hearing all of this, it it sounds like all of the things. When I was a JCLer, I used my club's publication to build this culture, to build like these wacky stories about our teachers and like make them into into these different figures. Y'all already have all of that, so so that's fan. I mean, that's wonderful. That's one of the. It's become like a mythology. Like, yes, we have exactly. Stories. Like the freshmen, even though they're virtual, they still found out about Chewism, our fake religion, mm -hmm. honoring yeah. Mr. Chew. So, like, there's some way it spreads through these classes. It's an oral tradition. Generations. Yeah. It's also an urban dictionary. If you look up Chewism, Chewism, there's an urban dictionary post for it, which is scary. Yeah, like my sister is a freshman, and like, even before our first club meeting with the freshmen, like in their human geo class, they were talking about it. And she was telling me about it. And I was like, how do they already know? Yeah, I have an older sister who went to health careers before I went to health careers. And so she would, like, of course she would have me like reading her Latin, like vocab to her to help her study and stuff. But like coming, like, I like, I was like, okay, I get it, it's cool. But then like going into it, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like, it's just the, like the enthusiasm from the upperclassmen and then like the underclassmen like start to get it and then they have the same enthusiasm and it's just like that cycle of like, woo, Latin club. Now, Aiden, you mentioned a video that you had made. We have the video because Mr. V sent it to me earlier. Um, so I have it and I can show it to the stream right now. And also there's a link to the video that uh, HCHS Latin club made uh, in the description of the video for in the description of this live stream video for those of you who want to go click on it but let me let me pause the western background ambient music which has been just terrific i've really enjoyed that 
Um, and I'll pull up Aiden's video. One second. Now, y'all won't be able to hear it, but the stream will be able to hear it. So you're just going to have to watch it <laughs> without sound. <laughs> but yes, it turns out that the real Latin club is the friends that y'all made along the way. Would you describe it that way? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, let's, I think we're set up right. Yes, we made it. Great. Here's the video. This is the right video, right? Yes. Great. <laughs> Terrific. Terrific. So, the noise didn't hear any of it. <laughs> oh, right. You couldn't hear it. Yes. Thank you for, for watching that in silence. Um, Looking Aiden, at that was so making... weird because I saw Mr. Two and Mr. V and I was like, whoa, what's with those haircuts? Like, that's yeah. those are like styles we haven't seen on them for a while since quarantine. Right, right. So I guess one of the, we're getting a little bit close to the hour, so we've only got a few minutes left, but a couple of questions for y'all. Are you planning, once you're alumni of HCHS, are you planning to stay involved at some level with the Latin Club? Definitely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Emma. Future Emma. Latin teacher over here. That was the next question is what y'all are thinking about doing after. I mean, Emma wants to become a Latin teacher. I think I always want to be involved in the JCL just because like, I think it's the most memorable experience of my high school career and that's kind of what made um high school and latin so fun for me and so i definitely want to like participate afterwards just come back every summer go to nationals and visit so yeah yeah um and i decided i'm going to major in classics in college so that'll be fun i can join a uh, senior classical league Absolutely, you can. All four of you can. And you can be in SCL for the rest of your lives. <laughs> yeah. JCL has definitely been, like, a big part of my high school experience. So, like, I'm definitely going to ask to chaperone once, the, like, the following years and this is all over. Then hopefully just chaperone maybe when we go to Italy. Oh, y'all have an Italy trip. Me too. Yes. We have an Italy trip. We got it's King like years. They, um, like you sign up to go and, um, this year was supposed to be an Italy and Greece trip, but unfortunately that had to be canceled. It's like pushed off to the indefinite future. Um, I'm not sure when that's supposed to happen, but, um, 
Mr. V and Mr. Chu go, and it's, I've never been, because that was before my time. Um, <laughs> the last one was, but that's probably one of the overlooked parts about the club that we have. Oh, I think they also take the art history students, but that's not relevant. <laughs> Gotcha. Uh, Mr. Webb in the chat says you can always remain involved even if you don't become a Latin teacher. Um, and it sounds like HCHS is a great example of that. Um, Mr. V was saying earlier that y'all have a lot of alumni come and talk who have gone on to to be doctors and, and various careers and other things and come back and talk to the Latin club. So that's one of the things that, like he said, I've been trying to do a little bit with this show. And it sounds like y'all's club is, is really at the forefront, at the cutting edge of that. You're already following that model. So that's that's a wonderful thing to see. Yeah. Uh, is there it's any... Really, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just, it's just really cool to see that these people who are in the club 10, 15 years ago feel the same way we do. Like it really shows that we've kept up this culture that we're so proud of. And it's just like amazing to see how it how it's impacted them and you can tell that it's, it's still a good memory that they, they think about often so it's it's really cool well it sounds like a lot of hchs students are perfect candidates to submit to the jcl memory book project <laughs> so please consider that if you haven't uh, there will be a post on instagram probably tomorrow about that so if you want to write up your best jcl memory and get it in a book We'd love to have that. Uh, is there anything else we should know about the club or any advice y'all would have for middle school students or other high school students about um, how to get the most out of JCL? Because it sounds like your club is really good at getting people really enthusiastic about JCL and trying to get the most out of the Latin club experience. Okay. I mean, I think there's one thing like, well, especially um, for our club, I think performance, there's something that I wanted to mention, especially because me and Emma, we're in the performance categories and that's something that we really like are proud of as a club, but like, yeah. But I think advice that I would like to give to middle schoolers, I think it's just joining Latin club at first, even though it doesn't seem like you, may, you might be joining it just because like, oh, it's a club to do for high school, but it really is like a whole other level of what a club is like. There's no other club that I have ever been a part of that is as like inclusive and just really genuinely just like fun. And it's really like a family, like we've said over and over again, but just enjoying the experience and just diving all in into what Latin is and what it has to offer you and like Greek too. But. I'd probably say it's nerve wracking to go to this school like it's a magnet school. So like you aren't with your high school, like your middle school friends and you can be nervous and like you're like, what's this club all about? Like it's 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 kind of scary, but I would say put yourself out there and do something new and you'll probably find that you love it so much. Like Latin Club for me was something I was doing because my older sister did it and Mr. Chu was like, do it. But really, once you like once you put yourself out there and you just kind of get involved, it's really the best thing you could do to make your whole an amazing experience. Yeah, it's everyone really supports each other in our club. And yeah, we're just really close knit. Yeah. That's one of the things I loved about JCL when I was in it. The more you put into it, the more you got out of it. It was very generous in that way. Sounds like y'all mm -hmm. y'all have all experienced that. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I I love hearing about your chapter. It sounds like a really awesome place to be. Um, and it sounds like all of your constituent members are very lucky to have the four of you as officers, as student leaders, and the other three student leaders who weren't able to make it on the show. Um, we can't really fit more than four people on the screen at once, uh, but please uh, give them my thanks and my regards also. Um, for those of you in the audience who are interested in learning more about Health Careers High School, there's a Wikipedia page about Health Careers High School that I was reading before the show. Uh, their school website. Oh, it's good. It's got a long, long list of awards <laughs> and everything. Um, their mascot is the Phoenix, which apparently is also sometimes referred to as the Flaming Chicken, according to the Wikipedia. I don't know if that's accurate. It's Wikipedia. 
Um, but you can learn more about their club there. Uh, you can follow them on Instagram. There's a, a HCHS Latin, I believe, is the name of the, the Instagram handle. There is um, the video that Aiden made that we watched just a couple of minutes ago is linked in the video description of this video, so you can check that out. Um, and you'll probably run into HCHS people at nationals because they bring 30 to 35 people to nationals every year. Cool. Well, with that, uh, I'll let y'all go. I know you've probably got some some homework to do or something else along those lines, but it's been very nice meeting with you, uh, meeting you and talking with you about the club. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for having us. us. Absolutely. See y'all at nationals sometime. Thank or in the SCL, you. or Bye. both. Or SCL, yeah. Bye, all Okay. And now, the last thing to do before we wrap up the stream is to bring on our student officers who are... I've uh, been trying to join, and I've been... I haven't let them into the other Google Meet, so... Uh, Annie and Irene, if y'all are watching, you can go ahead and try rejoining again. While we're waiting on them to do that, um, another reminder, we're live every Monday, like we said. Next week's show will be, here, I'll, I'll pull up the agenda again, JC Legends RPG. It's a it's going to be like a tabletop game with JCLers playing and SCLers moderating. It's, it's not quite Dungeons & Dragons, but it's... Um, insofar as it doesn't have as many rules as Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a good time. I attended the practice session where they all made their characters and everything else. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be a fun show to watch next week. Um, the week after that will be another local spotlight on Leon High School from in Florida. And then the week, so that's February 8th, will be another local spotlight. And then February 15th will be a panel discussion from JCL to Medicine. We've got, um, three different people who are at different stages of medical careers um, and we'll bring them on and talk about how they went from being J and they're all national off former national officers too, a, a former national president a former national first VP and a former national SCL officer so they're all going to be on uh, and talking about how JCL has influenced their career trajectories and things like that so those are the next three shows um, please tune in we're always live we're on Monday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern and uh, I look forward to seeing y'all then. All right, it looks like Annie is here. Hi, Annie, how's it going? It's good, I'm good. Good, good, here, let me bring you up onto the stream. There you are. Let me, here, get that going. All right, so what have you got for your officer report this week? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the election because I've actually been getting quite a few emails and messages about the campaign corner um, and how that usually comes out at the beginning of the year and why that that is not the case this year. So I kind of want to answer that a little bit more broadly and then update everyone on the Constitution contest and Constitution in general. So I'm going to start with the campaign corner because that's kind of the most pressing thing right now for candidates. Um, if you are looking into running for NJCL office, do not be discouraged the campaign corner is not out. We have decided um, as a committee and with the people that are specifically in charge of elections that we cannot put out a document right now um, simply due to the fact that we don't know exactly how the national election is going to run for the 2021 convention. And if I answer your emails vaguely or your messages vaguely, it's because um, I'm not allowed to kind of disclose certain things yet. Um, but the reason we don't have a campaign corner is because we don't want to give out information to candidates that is going to um, mislead them in any way and for them to work on certain aspects of their campaign that may not be as important for this year's convention. So that's kind of... Um, what's been happening on that front. That being said, if you are interested in running for office, please do contact me um, and please keep an eye out for social media posts and for those um, nomination forms that you do have to fill out. The very similar timeline to last year where it's usually June, July, where those forms are due, um, usually at the beginning of June, and then you kind of have to start planning your platforms and such for whatever 
convention activities we're going to be having for the national election. So that's just the first thing I want to disclose that real quick. Uh, the second thing is kind of an update on me in general and, and what is happening with the Office of Parliamentarian. So the first thing that's happening right now is um, we're kind of in the middle of some constitutional amendments of <laughs> Irene and Mr. Rishop know this. Uh, we had a meeting on Sunday, this past Sunday, to kind of discuss that. And Mr. Compton and I are creating reading guides for some of the more major amendments for the nominations, or excuse me, for the National Committee, as well as in the future for the state delegations to look over. So that's what's happening there. Um, the other thing that is going on is um, I'm working on the Constitution contest. We have finalized that. We're just waiting to put it on the website, but that is still active this year. And I've had um, some delegations definitely reach out to me asking me to look over their local constitution. So if you do have a local constitution that you want me to look over, I'd be more than happy to do so um, prior to you submitting just to give my feedback on it. Um, but those that that document should be up on the website fairly soon. And then the youth parliamentarian course, I have not forgotten about this. It has just been a little bit sidelined because of the um, more extensive amendment process this year. Uh, the first module is still with Mr. Compton to look over. So he's working hard on that. Mr. Compton's got a lot on his plate right now. So he's keeping up with that. Um, and then the majority of the modules, I would say just being realistic are probably going to come out closer to convention than I had planned in my campaign, but they're still going to come out this summer um, for next year's parlays. So they're still going to come out. It's just a different timeline than what I was expecting. And those That's will stay as a, as a permanent resource. Yeah, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And yes, as soon as the campaign corner is out, we'll be putting it up on social media and you'll, you'll be able to find it. Don't worry. Yes. Thanks very much, Annie. Irene, how are you doing? Hi, great. How are you? Good. Just had a great talk with a, a folks from a great Latin club. So what have you got for your officer report this week? Um, let's see. I do have some slides. So let's see. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Can you see my screen all right? Yes. Okay. So, oh, there. So the spring issue is coming out soon. Um, I've just started to make preparations for that. Um, it's coming out on March 1st, and there's also going to be um, a read through on JC Live. So tune in for that. Um, if you have any articles you'd like to submit, please turn them in to me by February 8th. Um, they can be basically just about anything. If you're a state officer, you can submit like state updates for your chapter. You can also submit creative writing pieces, some art, and yeah, any submission is appreciated. And also I'm doing a mosaic of JCLers for the cover again, just like I did for the winter torch. So if you would like to be on the cover of the spring issue of the Torch US, um, send a picture of you with like your favorite plant or a garden to me also by February 8th at editor at njcl.org. And yeah, that's all I have. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And um, be sure to get the, that information to Irene in the next couple of weeks. Um, there will be a Instagram post in the next 10 minutes with all that information. So. Um, thank you to both of you. It's been nice having you here. Um, yeah, we, we chatted yesterday. We had a committee meeting yesterday, like Annie alluded to. So it hasn't been too long since I've seen these folks, but it's, it's always good to see y'all and hang out with you and hear your reports. Thank you for that. I've said a couple of times now what the next three weeks worth of shows are going to be on JC Live. So we will see you next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern for JC Legends, the RPG Dungeons and Dragons type tabletop JCL Theater of the Mind game. It's going to be a good old time. Uh, let all your friends know. Thank you so much for watching this show. Thank you so much to the folks from Health Careers High School, both 
who were here on the stream and who were in the chat. We uh, The chat was really blowing up tonight. I had a little bit of trouble following it, but it seemed like everybody was having a very good time. So thanks for all the enthusiasm. Thanks uh, for all the engagement. Thanks to Health Careers High School. Thanks to Irene and Annie for coming on for Officer Reports. And we'll see y'all next week. Cheers. <laughs>